Cheap work boots will protect you. Good work boots protect you in relative comfort, but truly great work boots, they're like a companion on the job site, like an irreplaceable partner. And until I got my NYX Builder Pros, I had only owned good work boots from Red Wing and Chippewa and stuff like that. They worked out pretty well, don't get me wrong, and I have no problem with either of those companies. The Builder Pros, on the other hand, have been a revelation. These are boots that I come home and I'll go straight to work in the garage, I'll go mow the grass, I'll work in the yard, whatever it is, and I'll leave the boots on. They're that comfortable, and it's not just comfort. Comfort's a big part of it because I think that's what's lacking in a lot of work boots. But, uh, you know, I wish that somebody had made a video like this before I bought these. So I'm gonna give you a few of the insights that uh, I've found while wearing these for the last two years. This is a two year update on the Builder Pro. This is the Builder Pro made to measure or built to order or whatever they're calling it. More or less when you send in the fit sheet and you get one that's sort of built to your foot. Now, I didn't realize this, but I have kind of an abnormal foot. I think most people probably have things they have to worry about. I have a wide foot. I know a lot of guys do. I also have an extremely wide heel, like a hobbit or something but my foot is relatively short. Uh, I also have a high instep, which is the top part of your foot here. So as you can see, even the lacing on the top here is pretty open. So with all those things in mind, when I sent in the fit sheet and they sent over the, the boots to try on and then you have the conversation and everything like that, uh, it was a little bit of work to get to this point here, but I'm so glad that I did it. Now, over the last two years, I have put these boots through pretty much everything you would put a pair of boots through if you're doing the kind of work that I do. Outside, at night, in the middle of January in New England. I've worked in three states in these boots. I've worked in August, in the middle of the summer, with the heat beating down on you, 100 degrees outside. These have been on my feet. I've worn these through ankle-high mud, standing out in the rain, getting caught in downpours, uh, trudging through the snow. These things have been on my feet through it all, and they've been spectacular. Now, before I go on, I just wanna address something really quickly because I know what's gonna happen in the comments. It happens on every single one of my videos, and I wanna address it and cut it off at the pass. I don't care what you do for a living. If you're down there and you're already typing, yeah, those boots are hardly worn in. In six months, I would have busted right through those. That kind of macho, tough guy BS, it might impress your first year apprentice, but it has no place on this channel. This kind of gatekeeping that I see in the blue collar world, yeah, the iron workers are tougher than the plumbers, who are tougher than the electricians, who are tougher than the tin knockers. Stop it, all right? We're all out there doing a job. We're all busting our hump to make a paycheck and support our families. So I don't care what you do. Even if you don't work in construction, if you're a barista and you wanna wear these boots, I think you should be able to wear them. And I'm not gonna gatekeep for anybody. All right, I'm all pissed off now. Now where I had first seen Nyx was actually on a Wrangler Star video. If you're not familiar with Wrangler Star, he has like a homestead and he lives up in the Northwest and uh, he bought a pair of these boots, did a tour of the factory and they looked really interesting. And, you know, when you think about the price per wear of a boot, especially a work boot, you know, because we wanna make sure we get the most out of our purchase. Nobody out there is buying like high-end fashion brands to work in. You wanna make sure that you get the, the biggest bang for your buck. And when he explained it, it made a heck of a lot of sense. And it wasn't a something that I'm unfamiliar with, and that is your cost per wear. So something like this, which costs around about $500, uh, you wear it for a couple of years, you sent it back to get resold. You wear it for a few more years, you sent it back and it gets rebuilt. And actually, NYX will take everything except for this upper leather here and replace it. So the, all the leather along the, the back here, the toe, that all gets replaced. They keep this leather because really the, the shaft of the boot doesn't see a whole lot of abrasion or wear, so they keep that. But you get it rebuilt and then you can repeat that again. So we're talking about 10, 15, 20 years, maybe, out of a pair of boots? 500 bucks isn't that much, especially when you can blow through a pair of two to $300 boots every one to two years. Add that up, the math does not take very much at all, and you can figure that these will actually be better. And actually, the another thing, which a lot of people fail to mention, is that in the process, right, when you're actually wearing these, it's it's just a much better experience. They're, they're just a better boot, more supportive, more comfortable in that time it's a much more quality experience. So you can have something cheaper. It's, you know, not as good. It'll keep you comfortable uh, and relatively safe. 
but it won't be as good as these. So in my mind, it was a no-brainer. Now, pulling the trigger on a pair of $500 boots is no small thing, so it did take a little bit of back and forth. But I went ahead and I finally placed an order for a 10-inch Builder Pro with the Honey Vibram soles. Full rough out leather. A lot of times you can get these with smooth on the upper here. I wanted full rough out and a composite toe. I'm working in electrical, so we can't have anything with steel toe. And also you can't wear steel toe near third rail railroad. So that's what these were for specifically. I ordered these boots really to fit the job that I was doing at the time. Uh, it was gonna last another couple of years. So these have been my boots for that railroad work. And they've, they've served wonderfully. Looking back, I may have changed a few things, but I'm gonna get to that a little bit later. I placed the order. I waited, did the fit test, got the pair of try-on boots, the whole thing. Finally, these came in. I think the whole process maybe took about two months from the moment I clicked the order button and got these. When I got them in, I mean, they were beautiful. They were the heaviest boot that I had ever owned to that point. And I would say they probably are still the heaviest boots that I own. There's a lot of leather here. So I got them in and they come with a break-in sheet best way to break them in and what to expect. And I've gone over this before, which is usually what you want to do, especially with a boot this robust, which is going to take some breaking in, is you want to bring your old pair of boots and switch out when you really feel uncomfortable. You don't want to, it's not a tough contest here. Um, nobody's trying to prove how tough they are by going through the break-in process full days and having broken feet at the end of it. You really want to make sure that the process is, is, is good for you and it's allowing you to do your work. You can't do that with your feet asleep, right? So I, I went through the break-in process. It was pretty brutal. The first day I was able to make it till about noon. I swapped these out on my lunch break and wore my old boots. The next day, I, I think for the whole first week, it was about noon. After that, it was a little bit more. And honestly, it took me a good two months to get these to the point where they felt like they were really starting to break in. And a word about that break-in period, because I've even seen people who say, you know what, a boot shouldn't require any break-in period. And that can be true, especially if it's a boot that's made of a softer leather and one layer of leather. So you get a boot that's made out of kudu, for example, a very thick but soft and supple leather. That won't require a whole lot of break-in. It, it should be pretty comfortable right out of the box. This, on the other hand, is some of the thickest leather around. I believe this is six to eight ounce um, rough out leather, but I mean, it's full grain and it's stiff. There's a lot of leather there. And don't forget, it's got a very structured heel. It has that composite toe and underneath your feet is like four layers of oak tanned leather. As a matter of fact, Nick sent me a boot that's been cut in half, and this is the only way that you can see those four layers of oak tanned leather which live beneath your feet. Now, this is the difference between a $500 boot and a $300 boot. There's more leather in the sole of these than in the entirety of a cheaper work boot. And what does that mean for you? More support, more protection, more durability, a better boot overall. So there is a lot of leather underneath your foot here. And the idea there is what you want to do is over time with heat and moisture, all of the leather that's in these boots will start to conform. It'll compress and it will soften and it will mold to your foot, which is a good thing. You do want that kind of support, that kind of custom, you know, break in and that custom type of boot. The ankle will bend where your ankle bends. All of this leather here has to break in and soften up along those 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 creases that you make, which are they're totally unique to you in the way you walk and your feet, etc. So once they break in, they become not like slippers because slippers don't have any support, but I can put my feet into these and as soon as you put them in, you kind of suck into that heel cup and they feel like they're 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 like a mold of your foot. They're amazing. And the feeling of wearing these on the job, I've never met anybody else with a pair of Knicks. I've met a few people who have West Coast and Whites, never somebody with a pair of Knicks. It's the same type of thing though, where you feel like you're battle ready. These are like your armor. I can put these on and I know that no matter what I get into during the day, I'll be fine. If I have to hike in a mile to the job site, which I've had to do, these work just fine. They'll take it. If it's cold, what I do is I replace the, the insole with an alpaca wool insole. And there's enough room in there that I can wear some thick socks when it's cold out. Now, 
you know, these aren't cold weather boots, but I would say that maybe down to 20 degrees, I'm pretty comfortable. Past that, I go with something insulated. They're not dedicated winter boots. And in the summertime, I, the opposite. I go with the regular rubber insole. I, I opted for that uh, blue comfort insole that you can get because I am working some long hours, 12 hour days and stuff. Uh, I go with that and a thin, darn tough Vermont sock. Those have been just fine. And a lot of people, they're like, what kind of boots do you wear in the summertime? The same boots that I wear every other time of the year. And believe it or not, it's actually not uncomfortable. Leather, you have to remember, is a lot different than synthetic. A leather boot will actually, its temperature will go along with your feet. So whereas synthetics can be insulating, Leather tends to just kind of take on the temperature that your foot is. So it doesn't really make you overly hot. It also doesn't provide a whole lot, you know, lot of insulation. Now, I wanna talk about these Honey Vibrams because I get a lot of questions about these soles. A lot of people ask, how has the longevity been on them? I've heard they wear down really quickly. And they do, there's no doubt about it. Uh, these will wear a lot quicker than their counterpart, which I actually have on the Urban Logger here. So, the, the Honey Vibram is definitely a, a softer compound. You can feel it. This feels more like a car tread, if I can kind of give you an idea, whereas this one is much stiffer. But the reason that I got these, the reason that I opted for this, not only for the comfort, which really was priority number one is the comfort. Um, the other thing is that we are working on the railroad. So on the side of the railroad, if you haven't been on a railroad before, I know some people have, and it's kind of an old thing, there's what they call ballast stone. And it's basically like two inch sharp stone, which is meant to allow the water to drain away. It's known to eat boots. It's known to absolutely shred them. And the whole idea is if you're walking in it, you're, you're probably kicking some of the rocks. It'll just tear up the front. I've seen a lot of people with the toe exposed, their composite toe totally exposed because it just it just chews them up. So I figure wearing these, especially when it's really, really cold out, you know, other uh, rubber compounds can get really hard and slippery. I wanted something that was a little bit softer, a little bit more, you know, forgiving when I'm walking down there and, and standing and working and, and all that stuff. These have been great. They've been wonderful, especially when it's really, really cold out. I still feel like I have a little bit of give and a little bit of traction there. So um, I've never slipped on these. They've been they've been excellent. I'm glad that I went with them. Yes, they definitely worn down, and I can tell in the heel especially. This is rounded off and worn down quite a bit back in here from you know your natural gait. You know you put your your heel forward, <laughs> not like that, but you know, uh, and they've definitely worn down. You can see it. It's okay. I don't mind it, and to be honest with you, when I get them resold, I'll probably go with the Honey Vibrams again. Because once you go with these and you feel that extra layer of insulation and, and sort of shock absorption, it's a, a really nice thing to have. And sometimes, with my other boots, I, I kind of wish I had that. The other thing that has worn are the laces. Now the laces, these were much thicker, and now they have thinned so much, just from stretching and pulling and, and wearing them. Uh, I have the feeling that any minute now, these are probably gonna snap. They, they've thinned so much and become somewhat stiff. And I think that's just, it's to be expected when they've been exposed to so much harsh elements. The great thing about that though, is they're so easy to replace. So besides the sole, which you expect to wear, and the laces, which also are replaceable and you do expect to wear, nothing else in the boot has shown much sign of being damaged. I mean. Again, I work in the dirt and in the rocks, so there's nothing like sheetrock compound or anything like that, or mud and grease uh, you know, being caked in there. So, would I have done anything different? If I knew what I know now, looking back and ordering these, would I have even ordered these boots? Uh, you know, and I have no horse in the game here. I don't think that I, I would have um, changed much. I would have still gotten the Builder Pros. They have been fantastic best work boots I've ever owned I've said that many times the one thing I think I may have altered I'd keep the same thing I, I think though I would have cut this down a little bit these are 10 inch tall and I don't really know why I got 10 inch tall boots I think maybe it was like man I never had tens before let's go with that I think I only just owned sixes I, I probably would have gone with an eight inch tall boot you know I mean you still get the support and I think you get 90% of the benefit of a taller boot with an eight inch boot uh, a 10, it just takes a long time to lace all the way up. 
and to take off at the end of the day. It's it's it sounds like not very much. It's an extra two inches, and what two eyelets maybe, but it is a lot. I mean, when you're lacing this thing up, it takes you a good you know 30 seconds to really pull it, make sure it's good, wrap it around the ankle. It's a lot. It goes on. So I think that an eight inch boot would have given me most of the benefit and uh, a little bit less time to take them off and to put them out at the end of the day. The other thing is I went with 100% rough out, as I mentioned. Standard, the Builder Pros come with a smooth leather upper. And I, I think that I just really liked the look of a full rough out boot. And I like the idea of the abrasion resistance, which is shown to be true. But I think that maybe a smooth leather upper actually has some some merit behind it. I think that the idea is that this, you know, your, your pant leg comes down around here anyway. And it just allows this to slide even more over the top of it. There's really not much benefit, unless you're somebody who's tucking your pant leg into your boot, which I've seen some guys do. Uh, this doesn't see a whole lot of wear, so I think I probably would have gone with the smooth on the upper here. Besides that, though, these have been um, perfect, really perfect. I, I don't think that I would have changed much else. And even those two things are, are pretty small, not enough to warrant getting other boots. Now, the one drawback of these, if you decide to go and get yourself a pair of these boots, the one thing I will warn you about is that this is a total gateway drug into better boots. Until this point, I had a few decent boots, but really nothing of this build quality. That spoiled me into going ahead and getting a few more pairs of NYX. This is the Urban Logger. <laughs> so I wanted the support and everything that I got from my work boots in my casual boots. And that's why I got the Urban Logger. These are, are, are a little bit more user friendly. These are built on their high arch last. This is their moderate arch last. So uh, I got the Urban Loggers. Not too much later, I got the Americanas because these are even more of a, a casual boot. You know, they don't have the same tread pattern or anything like that. These are basically uh, a dressed up work boot, whereas these are uh, a casual boot. and. Uh, you know, once you get used to this build quality and you get used to having that kind of protection and support, you kind of want it everywhere. So that's why I went with these two here. So the one thing I will warn you about is, is not only making the right choices for you and your job site, but it may lead to a few more expensive boot purchases. And NYX has been great. I mean, I think that, uh, uh, you know, anybody who watches this channel knows that I've featured NYX a lot, and for good reason. They've been wonderful, and I, I love their products. They're all just um, fantastic. Some of my favorite boots that I own, and some of the boots that I wear most are NYX. So are the Builder Pros worth it? 100%. Absolutely. These are $500 boots that I would buy again in a heartbeat. And as a matter of fact, I kind of wish that I had known about the benefits of these boots before I bought them. Now that's a lot of money, as I mentioned. I mean, 500 bucks is no small amount. That's double what I was used to paying for boots. And I remember telling my wife about it. I was like, hey, you know, I found these boots that I really like and uh, they look like they're gonna be great. I explained everything to her. Even she was like, that's, that's a lot of money. Looking back though, and the fact that two years later I can still wear these and they'll still perform as well. And there's no like really big things that have broken down at all. Absolutely, I would buy these again, 100%. And one of the great things is that, you know, I feel more able to do my job. I'm not fatigued as easily. Uh, at the end of the day, I still feel pretty resilient. As I mentioned, I bring these home and I wear them in the garage or outside or whatever. And I don't ache to get out of them. A lot of times my other boots, I'd be like, oh man, let me get out of these things. I don't feel that way with these. These feel excellent and I, I wear them until it's time to come inside. So I think that I'm kind of like Johnny Appleseed up here in New England. I'm just spreading the word about Nick's because the experience has been so different and unique from all the other boots that I've worn on the job, which are just so much different than like casual boots. Um, these do that job and they do it so spectacularly that I want other people to experience it as well. So I tell most people who are interested in gear about these boots because as far as work boots go, I, I don't think that um, there's anything out there that can touch these. Maybe, maybe there are and you know, hey, the, the Wesco Job Masters are supposed to be great. I know the whites are great and stuff, but uh, I'm not sure how much they can improve on these. I mean, where's the improvement going to be? They're comfortable, supportive, they work, they've, they've been excellent. Maybe I'm wrong. 
But as far as my experience goes, these are the king of the hill. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I'll catch you next time.